Good evening and a very warm welcome to our open day for our open evening for 2016. I'm Frances Manning, I'm a head teacher. I haven't had the opportunity yet to meet you all, I've seen quite a few of you on your way in and around the school. Uh, I'm head teacher here, I've been here, this is my 10th open evening, uh, so been here quite a while, I'm very proud of this school. I'd like to begin by saying how genuinely delighted I am to see so many of you here tonight. There are some familiar faces. I know there are a few people who came last year in year five. Uh, I think there's a few current parents around that I've seen. Um, but for many of you, this is the first time in our school. And I'd like to welcome you to the school and hope that you will find this evening informative and that you'll have the opportunity to have any questions that you've got about us answered this evening. Our year eight and our sixth form students who are taking you on tours this evening will tell you very clearly, I think, what their experience has been like in school. Uh, we don't give them a script. It's kind of free flow. It's how they see it. Um, and it's lovely hearing year eights who have been with us just a year um, and at one end of the school and our, year, um, our sixth form who are really very nearly the finished product. We've just got a little bit of polishing to do before we let them loose in the big wide world. Tonight gives you a great opportunity to see our school and to meet and speak to the staff. Uh, we've got governors out um, welcoming as well, and obviously our students about their knowledge and experience of the school. However, it is a showcase event, and clearly the school experience is not like this every day. So I would encourage you all to take the opportunity to visit us on our open mornings, which are Thursday this week, that's the 28th of September, or Wednesday next week, the 5th of October. Now both of those events begin at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, I know quite a lot of you come on the way after the school run. If you do, our coffee shop will be open, and it is open this evening as well if you want to get coffee. Um, but uh, if you could try not to get here too early, it makes it a little bit easier for us for tours. Uh, but the, the mornings do begin at 9.30, and you'll have the opportunity to tour in small groups, and you'll actually see lessons going on. We don't change our timetable. You will be shown around the school as it operates. <coughs> um, Myself and my leadership team will also be available for any questions that you've got on that day. There will not be a formal presentation, uh, but we'll be there to talk to you and we'll give you refreshments after uh, your tours so that you've got the opportunity to talk to us. And you'll be able to witness the working atmosphere in the classroom and see for yourselves the very positive relationships and enthusiasm of the students and the staff in their learning. You're looking to join us at a very exciting time in the ongoing development of our school. As some of you are aware, there will be a significant increase in demand for secondary school places in September 2018 for children living in Hitchin and the surrounding villages. Following discussions with Hertfordshire County Council and a subsequent consultation, the governing body at the school have agreed to expansion at Hitchin Girls School. The expansion is of course subject to a new build on this site and will actually hopefully be um, on the field at the side here next to our sixth form centre and the granting of all necessary planning consents. And later on this term there will be a consultation on some changes to our admission arrangements for 2018 to help to accommodate the significant rise in local demand whilst ensuring that the school continues to serve the town and the local villages. This will be a public consultation and so you will all have the opportunity to share your views with us be shared through our primary schools and also through the local press. <clears throat> also, after many years of hoping, and I've had my fingers crossed for a long time, we will shortly begin the construction of our new sports hall, with an expectation that this will be ready for use from January 2018. It's the latest in our facilities improvement in recent years, uh, which has included our sixth form centre, new classrooms next to the science block, the sports <coughs> pavilion in the classroom across Highbury Road, and some hard courts over there, and our coffee shop, uh, which some of you may have seen this evening. And the sports hall is a facility that we have wanted for many, many years, and its addition will enable us to further expand our already outstanding PE offer. <clears throat> so why would you consider sending your daughter to Hitchin Girls School? The most important thing for me as a parent, and also as the head of this school, is that the students in our care are happy. Happy students are successful students. They come to school every day, they work hard, they play hard, and they make great progress. And that, for me, is what we're about. I know from speaking to students and parents over many years, that one of the things that they value so highly about Hitchin Girls School 
is the real sense of community in and around the school, where all the people involved with us have a very clear pride in their school. They can see that we're all working towards a common purpose and that there's a strong desire for all of us to succeed, that we're all working for the greater good really, which is to get the best outcomes for our students. And I believe you'll see this for yourself tonight and in your visits this week and next week during the day. And you'll see that huge sense of pride that the girls have for the school, for the sometimes strange traditions, some of which you've seen in the film at the beginning and you'll hear about as you walk around. They're proud of our reputation in the kitchen and beyond, our record of success academically and in sports, music and other areas, and their real and genuine affection for the school. I know that as parents, you'll be interested in our performance and examinations. All our young people need to finish their education with qualifications which will open up to progression for them in whatever career they decide they want to pursue. This year, we've seen further improvements in outcomes at A-level and at GCSE in our school, which has really bucked the national trend, where nationally we saw decreases in outcomes for the first time for several years. There is a copy of the exam results, the full exam results in your pack, and they're also available on the website. I just need to remind you that that is unvalidated data. We're still waiting for some um, reviews of exams. We haven't had all of those back. And obviously, we would have to wait for the national data to be published. Um, but what you've got is what we have um, as of today. And you can see that our results are consistently high over several years, both compared to local and to national figures. But I'll just give you the headlines for this year. At A-level, over a third of the grades achieved by students were A-star and A-grades, and 87% of our students achieved A-star and C, sorry, A-star 2C at A-level. Three students gained all A-star outcomes in their chosen subjects, and a further 19 gained all A-star and A-grades. At GCSE, 87% of our students achieved the old measure 5A-star to C grades, including English and Maths. That's still reported, but it's officially what used to be. We have a new measure now, um, which is called Progress 8, or P8. P8 measures progress from P Stage 2, when your daughter leaves primary school, to the outcomes they achieve at GCSE. A score of zero would mean that students have made the progress that is expected of them from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 4. And early indicators suggest that the P8 score across Hertfordshire this year is likely to be around 0.25. Our P8 score at the girls' school here from GCSE results this summer is likely to settle at around 0.71, which means that our Year 11 cohort achieved almost three quarters of a grade per subject higher than similar students in other schools nationally, and we're really delighted with that outcome. Now, they're great headlines, and they show our commitment to focusing on achievement at all levels, not just about the headlines for those top grades, because it encompasses the achievement of all our students. And we have a number of individual personal success stories every year of which we are really proud. The performance of students of all abilities show that we add very high levels of value to student learning in their time with us, much more than those nationally or in some schools locally. In fact, a number of our students in our Year 11 cohort this year achieved on average more than two grades higher than expected progress with one student achieving a massive three grades higher than expected progress in each subject. For our students with additional needs, our student development department offers assistance both in the classroom and on a one-to-one -one basis where needed. Outcomes for students with additional needs are excellent in the school, producing some of our best added value last year, as I alluded to just recently. We also recognise and cater for our more able students across the curriculum and in all lessons, as well as providing a variety of additional activities for them outside of school. Now clearly, our core purpose is to provide your daughter with a first class education, which will enable her to move into whatever career path she wishes when she leaves us in around about 2024, which seems such a long way away, but that's roughly when she'll leave. However, we're not just about exams and academic achievement. Although they're important, they're not the be-all and end-all for our children. We want to work together with you to enable our students to be resilient and ready to learn. 
to view difficulties and obstacles not as problems, but as opportunities to develop and grow stronger. We want to encourage our girls to be healthy and be mindful of looking after themselves, both physically but also in terms of their mental health. And we want them all to have a can-do attitude, where no one says, I can't do this, or I'm no good at languages, I'm rubbish at maths, I can't do PE, or whatever it is they're feeling insecure about. Instead, we want to encourage that can-do attitude, one where we say, I can't do this yet, and if I work hard, I will be able to do it soon. We nurture a real sense of ambition for everyone in our school community, and teaching and learning is at the absolute centre of all that we do. And this impacts on all members of the community, the staff, the students, governors, and you as parents, enabling us all to grow as learners, to be resilient, and to, to develop a positive growth mindset. We encourage the belief that our most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. And we do work hard here, but we play hard too. Brains and talent are just the starting point. And this creates a love of learning, which you can actually feel in the school, in lessons, and enables our students to really build their personal resilience. This is all supported by our very clear behaviour for learning policy, which is consistently applied across the whole school from year seven through to the sixth form. And it ensures that teachers can do just that, teach, and students can learn. Time in the classroom is spent on learning, and there is a common expectation from students and staff that this will be the case. Now, a key concern for you as parents, and for all parents at secondary transfer, is about friendship issues often. Will my daughter make any friends? There's nobody from our school going, or not many people from our school going. And also, parents always worry about bullying. We do a lot of work in our induction programme for all our New Year 7 students. Um, so the friendship issue is kind of dealt with straight away. We have three or four days where we have a separate timetable where they work in different groups over the course of four days and really make, have lots of opportunities to make new contacts and friends. <clears throat> in terms of bullying and falling out, friendship issues, Hitching Girls is a telling school. Where things are not right for any of our students, they're encouraged to tell us. If someone's being treated badly by others or being bullied, students are encouraged to tell us. Like in any family, and we are just like a very, very big family, uh, individuals don't always get on. And by encouraging our girls to speak out and share their concerns, we can address issues very early on and usually nip it in the bud very quickly. I'm going to take a break now and I'm going to introduce you to our nearly finished product. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Zoe Burton, who is our head girl this year, and she's going to talk about her experiences at the school. Zoe. Good evening, I'm Zoe Burton, and I'm the current head girl here at Hitcher Girls School, and I'd like to personally welcome you to our school this evening. Hopefully tonight we'll give you an insight into the school, from the advanced facilities, to the passionate attitudes of our students, to the dedicated support of our staff to help you choose which secondary school is right for you. I'm currently in year 13 and I'm making the difficult decision of which universities to apply to. This reminded me of the decision I made seven years ago to come to Hitching Girls. I remember fearing I would get it wrong, that I'd choose the wrong school that just wasn't right for me, and my parents shared the exact same fears. However, when I came to this very open morning, evening myself, I got a feel for the school that immediately showed me that Hitching Girls was right for me. And looking back on my time here, I definitely made the right decision. The choice of secondary school is such an important one because it's where you grow up. I can still clearly remember walking through the doors to the lower school hall on my very first day of year seven, but I can hardly recognise the 11 year old girl who did. Over my time at Hitching Girls, I've been given so many opportunities and experiences that I've changed so much just from being here. Mrs Manning gives a talk to all the New Year 7s every year that stays with every student until the day they leave and even beyond. And it's about a bag. The metaphorical bag that you have at the very start of Hitching Girls that you gradually fill up with all the lessons you learn throughout your time here. This goes beyond the academic lessons you learn. You fill it with the opportunities you've been given, the life skills you've learned, the friendships you've made and the independence you've received. It's safe to say that after seven years here, my bag has gotten pretty heavy. I filled it with a school trip to Greece, the friends and memories I've made, the grades I've achieved, and becoming a girl. 
At the start of year seven, I was often too nervous to even raise my hand in class, and now I'm here talking to you on a big stage. This shows just how brilliantly this school shapes all of its students for the better. Hitch and Girls was founded in 1889, and although we've come a long way since then, we haven't forgotten our heritage. Every summer we celebrate Founders Day to remember the long-held traditions of our school. The younger students run enterprise activities, while the older students attend a church service in town with Hitchin Boys School, and this is followed by Sports Day, and it's a day that everyone always looks forward to. Once a member of the school, the infamous tradition of form running is something you never forget. Each term we have a school relay race, which brings the whole school together on the field to watch the chosen runners from their forms race for victory and the much esteemed trophy. As well as tradition, Hitchin Girls is extremely modern in its approaches to learning. Many departments now have iPads, which students can use for research activities and independent learning. We've got a new six form block with a spacious common room and a well-equipped pavilion. This provides an excellent work environment for students of all year groups and gives students different ways to work and learn. The school also has an extremely wide curriculum, unparalleled elsewhere. From year seven onwards, students have the opportunity to learn Latin, classics, ancient history, which adds more variety and choice to their curriculum. Although sixth form seems a long way off now, I assure you it comes around very quickly. We have a consortium sixth form with the boys school and the priory school, which provides students with a wider choice of A-levels and to not be restricted by timetabling, and gives them the opportunity to meet new people and experience a new working environment. Additionally, we also provide a huge variety of clubs, especially in our PE department. I myself tried every sport going, from athletics to dance to rounders to rhythmic gymnastics, when I would inevitably get caught in the ribbon every time. Although I soon discovered that I wasn't quite a sporting natural, I was still welcome to the clubs every week, because the clubs aren't just about ability, it's about the community, the camaraderie and the fun. Aside from sport, we also offer a classics club to expand their knowledge, a debating society for the future politicians, and a book club for avid readers, and so many more. There really is something for everyone, and every new student is encouraged to get involved from their very first day. I can't talk about what makes this school so special without talking about the staff. The teachers are all dedicated to their subject, passionate about what they teach, and most importantly, committed to helping the students achieve their absolute best. The teachers always go above and beyond. They organise trips to art galleries, Houses of Parliament, PGL, and even to foreign countries, including Greece, Italy, Iceland, Holland, and even Hawaii. I've seen it firsthand throughout my time here, from teachers helping me when I was a stressed year seven who couldn't find their PE kit, to the teachers who dedicate their own time to reading through endless personal statements and university applications in year 13. Whatever support you need, there's always someone who's happy to provide it. Another aspect of Pitching Girls which makes it so unique is the way every student is accepted, no matter who they are or where they come from. They'll be appreciated for their uniqueness, their talents, and the character that each and every girl brings to the school. Every student is seen as equal within the school and will be given the same opportunities, making anything possible for every student. Seven years ago, I chose a school that would provide me with lifelong friendships, an abundance of opportunities, and the determination to continue to achieve beyond the school gates when I leave this year. Being a Hitchin Girl student has given me the mindset that I can achieve anything I set my mind to, and has given me the skills and lessons I need to have whatever future I decide. When you're in year 13, you'll look back on this day and know you made the right decision choosing Hitchin Girl School. Thank you very much and enjoy your evening. Be really proud. Um, our head girl always writes her own speech. We don't have any input into it. And when I heard it, I read it the other day, and I heard it this afternoon, it gave me goosebumps. I've just got them again. So thank you very much for your words, Zoe. You've heard from Zoe a little bit about the wide ranging opportunities for girls outside of the classroom, and also some of the uh, slightly <coughs> odder things like form running and uh, Founders Day, which is, is a, a very good tradition for us. And those enrichment activities often become a source of the many memories of student life at the girls' school. And when we meet at Leaver's Supper at the end of year 13, I'm always touched by just how significant those trips and events have been, and they come back again and again as, as the real memories uh, for those leaving students. We're coming to the end of what I need to say to you, and 
Those of you who have heard me speak at this occasion in the past, possibly, if you were here last year, will be familiar with some of what I'm going to say in my conclusion. But I make no apologies for this. It's what I truly believe, and so it remains fundamentally unchanged. I spoke at the start about what you might be looking for in a secondary school for your daughter. It's a few years, actually quite a few years now, since I made this same choice that you're making now. My children are 27 and 23, so it seems like a long time ago. Um, and it's not always easy to define exactly what we're looking for in a secondary school for our children. For me, both as a parent as a, and as the head teacher here, I translate those, um, what I'm looking for, into some very simple aims that I have for our students in their life with us. I want each individual who passes through this school to be proud of their achievements, not just in the classroom, but in the whole spectrum of their interests. I want our children to be resilient and confident at school, at home and in life. To see problems as opportunities, setbacks and mistakes as chances to learn, and for them to achieve personal growth and successes as a result. I want them to feel safe and secure in school, and to be able to talk to their teachers and to each other, both about their work, but also about themselves. I want them to, I want them to have enjoyed their time at secondary school, to be happy to be here, to be more than a bit sad when they leave, and to have fond memories about some of the stranger and quirkier bits of life in school. And not least, I want everyone to be able to say that they were encouraged to express their own talents, to do their very best, and that they were given the academic rigour, opportunities and support that they needed to achieve their aims for their future career. I hope this is what you're looking for too, and I hope that some of what you've heard this evening might make you think that this is the right school for your daughter. And if it is, I do hope that you will trust us at the girls' school to deliver what you want for your daughter. Now just to end, uh, another quick reminder, our open mornings are Thursday this week, the 29th of September, Wednesday next week, the 5th of October, beginning at 9.30. There's no presentation, but this evening's presentation will be on our website uh, later on this week, so if you want to look at it again, you can't sleep, uh, or you've got friends who haven't been able to see it, then please point them to the website. And um, I would just like to thank you very much for listening. If you have finished touring tonight, you think you've seen everything you want from the school, um, in a moment when I've finished, if you'd like to leave the hall first, and if you wish to continue touring, if you could just remain seated for a few moments, I can see our guides are hovering here, you'll be picked up, not necessarily in the same group, but we'll try and send you to the bits of the school that you need to see or you'd like to see. I will remain in the hall, I'll come down onto the floor, so if there are any questions at all, I'd be more than happy to speak to you. Thank you very much for listening.